I'm CK. Today we've got one from an old friend, manufacturer that is, I'm not really their friend. This is from the Ding Dong store. It is a temperature module kit and that looks kind of interesting. It's got, looks like it's got a uh, microcontroller and some other things on board. So we'll put it together, see what we learn and see if it works. And I hope you enjoy the video. Let's see what we got. We've got a bag and on the bag is thank you for your order and here's a QR code quick response code to allow us to get an online manual even though I believe there's a piece of paper in here which will tell us everything we need to know. So let's rip the bag open gently and again it's from the Ding Dong store which we've done lots of kits from them. We'll look at the paper first. Digital alarm based on a 5-1 single chip microcomputer and temperature sensor DS18B20. I'll look that up, maybe, and talk about it. Uh, wide measurement range and high accuracy. The range is 0 to 99C, which is 32 to 210 Fahrenheit. Accuracy is a tenth of a C or 0.18 Fahrenheit. Note, it can only display C. Okay, so I don't really care about the Fahrenheit. Temperature range of kit can be set and the functions can be turned on and off. When the module detects current temperature is higher, it'll beep. I think I've done one like this before. I haven't done this exact one. And then we've got in installation steps. Then a picture and operation instructions. And then uh, it's got more in the QR code, which probably has more pictures. They say it has more pictures, so we will bring that up. Pull out the circuit board next to give that a good look. And we've got the STC microcontroller, LCD display, uh, 49012 transistors, then resistors that all have the value listed, which is nice. Oh, here's a uh, 18B20. That may be a voltage regulator. Then we've got a 12 megahertz crystal. That's interesting. A speaker, set, decrement, add, another 9012, a lot of transistors, reset, a switch on uh, ALM, I don't know what that means, uh, and DC power, which they don't actually tell us how much power goes into this. How much power goes into this? Uh, you should tell me the power, folks. Seriously, you should tell me what power goes into this because I don't want to blow it up. I'm sure 5 volts will be fine. 3 to 5 volts will be fine, I'm sure. If not, but again, I'll pull up the... Here's the STC microcontroller and socket for that. USB power supply. Okay, so it's USB, so 4.5 5 volts, nominal, whatever. Nothing else in the bag. Put those over here. We'll dump out all the parts. Oops. Try not to spill them on the ground. That's why I have spare parts. Here's the digital display. Pretty common. Alarm buzzer, also very common and obviously magnetic because everything's sticking to it. Push button on off switch, some LEDs, power connector, uh, a resistor pack, I believe, or either that or it's a driver for the LEDs. Let me see what this is. This is a, uh, yeah, it's the network resistor, the 103s. I thought that's what it was, but I guess that's for inrush for the resistors, I mean for the LEDs, but I'm not certain because there are more LEDs, I mean fewer LEDs, and we've got resistor points. Let's take a look at that. That's where this will go. If I can get it in the holes correctly, come on. Is anything bent or am I just acting badly? Oh, one pin is one pin is a little bent, throwing everything off. 
straighten that out a little bit. We'll put that together when we get to the putting together stage. I'm sorry, I distracted myself. So it's pretty straightforward. Some uh, smoothing caps or uh, decoupling caps, whatever you want to call them. And the stuff. So it looks pretty straightforward. Put that switch back in there. So let me get the soldering iron heated up and we'll put this thing together. Before we start, let me zap up the build guide if I can find the... Just doing a lot of searching, going to China, whatever. It's a PDF. We'll hit the PDF. Cannot open the document. Excessive number of documents, two large pages, something. It's acting not fun. So I can't bring up the build document because it won't download. So that's a bit of a bit of a pain. So first thing we're gonna do though is we're gonna start with our favorite, which is doing all the resistors. And we're gonna start with all the uh 2.2, you can see red, red, uh, black, brown for 2.2 K ohm, and we'll validate that with our meter just because. Always is a good idea, just check 2.18. That's dandy. So, as we typically do, we'll go and install one. And see how the board takes solder. This is a good board. It's got all the holes are through hole plated, which is not typical for these for low end electronics kits. Most of that most of those are typically single layer with just solder pads on the back. Through hole plating is better for a lot of reasons. Uh, better contact. Uh, you're not going to get corrosion, things like that. And the board solders very well. I'm going to lit dwell a little bit on the solder to see how well it weeps through. And it weeps through pretty well, you can see it. So that shows you how one of the resistors goes on. And because there's all the rest of them are going to be pretty much the same thing, I will change playback to speed it up and probably cut some of it out because it is resistor time. So enjoy resistor time. Uh, so that's all for resistor time for today. Now we're going to put this connector on here. They call it a socket. It's not really a connector, but it's basically mimics uh, a USB connection, even though it's not, but it would allow us to, uh, I think, program the microcontroller if we were so inclined to do that. I'm not going to do that. If I wanted to write software, I wouldn't be retired. I would still be writing software for a living, but I'm not. And look at that. This is all bleeding over. The solder resist is not strong here. So just make sure you don't get bridging between the pins. So that's that. Now we'll put the now just talking about putting the capacitors in right now. So first we'll take the 10 microfarad cap if we can find it. This is 10 microfarad And that's it. C1. And it's very, very well marked as to which side is the positive side, which is good. And then we've got C3 and C2, and those are both uh, 30 pico. Let's see, that's 130 pico. And this is, I just saw it, and it hopped away from me. This is the other 30 pico at C1 and I mean C2 and C3. They are not 
polarized. So they go in any which way you want. My guidance, of course, is to put them in so it would be relatively easy to see the values if you ever need to if something's not working right. Uh, red LED at D2, which is here, that's the alarm LED, and that is not an LED. Oh, by the way, they gave us extra LEDs and they gave us an extra uh, 10K resistor. Ding Dong Store does do that. They will give you extras of the frangible parts or parts that may fail, uh, which I appreciate because you can always just stick them in your parts bin and you have them in case somebody misses one for you. And now we'll put the 12 meg timing crystal for the microprocessor in. These are also not polarized. They can go in in any direction. And before we flip over the page, I'll go ahead and solder these down. Like so. Now we'll flip the page over and we'll put the 9012s in, the triodes as they call them, even though we typically in U.S. usage we call them uh, transistors. Transistors are all on. Now we're going to do the button keys. Little tactile key uh, switches. They are not square, they are rectangular, which makes it less likely that you put them in wrong. Hmm, it's interesting the layout on the board isn't quite right for these which is unusual because these are pretty standard sized but I'm having to splay the leg out a little bit here we go that's one okay that one goes in fine That one's fine. That one's a little bent in. Okay, I'm going to solder all those in because they're a little, they're not quite as tight as they often are. So let me zap them all down. One pin on each first. That's all of those. Now we'll put the beat DC power supply socket on. Goes right here. Pins are offset, so it would be hard to get it wrong. I will need another piece of solder though. Now the switch, and the switch has got a couple of pins bent. I'm not quite sure. I don't know if this switch has polarity. I think it does. There's a notch here, and there's a square hole there. So I think it goes, the notch end goes up where the square hole on the circuit board is. I won't solder that right now. And we got the little buzzer, and it is... It is polarized, so don't take the sticker off, because that reminds you where the positive side is. Take the sticker off when you're all done, of course. I'm going to bend this pin a little bit so I can get it to stay in place while I do something else. Okay, and then we've got the resistor bank which goes here at RP1 
one. Now, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but it's got a dot here, and there's a square hole here on the array, and the dot goes by the square hole because that's the common lead for this resistor bank. And I'm actually going to set this on a little piece of foam, like so, and solder that all down, and I'll get the uh, other two components, or one component, I forget. This is driving the LED display. And that's what I was hoping for, and that's what I was hoping for with the online build guide, that it might have a schematic, but since we can't download the build guide, we don't know if it has a schematic. But it's a typical current limiting resistor bank for LEDs. There's that bit of stuff. And now uh, it is saying install the micro uh, install the socket and then the microcontroller. I'm not going to do that because I am never going to program this microcontroller and I am never going to uh, it's not like I'm ever going to replace it so I'm just going to solder it down to the board oops I'm just going to solder it down to the board directly and put the socket in my spare parts bin because it's always nice to have spares of commonly used things like sockets. There we go. And I'm verifying that the notch on the chip is by the notch on the printing. I'm also verifying all the pins went through. And they did. So, solder all these pins up. That's the chip in place. And now we're going to put the temperature sensor on and that is the part the uh, the U eighteen B twenty goes right here. That's the actual temperature sensor. solder that for a second and we'll take our little digital display and put it in and dots on the bottom dots on the bottom pretty easy to determine where it goes and it's got one bent pin as usual and I'm gonna put that on a piece of foam Press it down a little bit. Actually, I need more solder. I can't get by with that little dribble I have left. Push this down again. Lock that down. All good. Now I'll do the temperature sensor. And we should be done. Let's take a look. Oh, let me trim some leaves. And we should be done. So let's take a look. Make sure we've got all the component holes filled. And we do, and the other thing I'm going to do is, as I usually do, I'm going to go on the back with the index card, make sure everything is soldered, make sure there's no bridges, and I use an index card because it allows me to focus on one line at a time instead of being overwhelmed by everything at once. So that's it, okay? And we've got some extras. The socket is not technically an extra. I just chose not to put it in. But we've got an extra tack switch. We've got an extra capacitor. We've got an extra transistor, extra resistor, and two extra LEDs, which is kind of neat. Put those away for future kits. And now 
I'm going to do a couple of things here. I'm going to back the camera off a little bit because I'm going to bring in my fluke and I'm going to plug in. Oops. I plug in a thermocouple. And where are we at? Set it to temperature. And the temperature now right now is 20.5 degrees centigrade. Uh, this is a type K thermocouple, which has a slop factor of 2.5 degrees Celsius because it is so, uh, it covers such a broad range. I'm going to see if this connector, no that connector is not going to work. So the, the display here with that part, I don't know the temperature range on that part, oh it's 0 to 220, uh, is a little more precise than the Type K thermocouple, which can go up to, what, a thousand C. So the Type K is less accurate than the one that's built into here. But let's see what happens. Let me pull the thing off the buzzer. Now we'll plug her in and power it up, see if it works. And it's thinking. Now that's saying it's 27 C out here. which is probably fine. Uh, let me see what the actual temperature is according to my local weather. 72 Fahrenheit. So this is reading high because my ambient for my area right now is should be 22 which is what this is closer to reading. So this is reading a little bit high, and I don't see any way to compensate for that. But, that's okay. Let me put my fingers around this one and see what it gets up to. 28.9. Uh, now I'm going to put my finger around this sensor. See what that does. Twenty-eight point nine. That's pretty good. Twenty-nine. That's fine. I'm going to reset this, see if it drops down. No, it's still reading high. Huh, interesting. So now what I'm going to do is uh, S2, which I can't tell which one's S2, but that's okay. Okay, the high alarm is at 38.C, the low alarm is at 0C. So I can change the high down to, let me take that down to about 28. Leave that alone. Now if my finger taking it up to 28 and it beeps and it works just fine. So that's pretty neat. Very loud too. That's a very useful a buzzer. You could definitely know that's going on. And of course you can set the low temperature same way by uh, flipping around to low and then let me get it up. Let me take low. Ah, I'm not going to set that because I don't want, you've already heard it go high. So that's it. A very straightforward kit to put together. Very useful kit. And I think something uh, youngster might be proud to make and proud to have in his or her room or outside their window, whatever. All in all, a very good kit. And I hope you enjoyed the video.